What is going on, guys? Welcome to today's live stream. It is Sunday, March 24th, and I'm here. <laughs> I'm at the gym. <laughs> I'm, uh, uh, I'm at the gym. I've got a meal here I need to work on um, while we're doing this whole thing. And yeah, I mean, I guess it's been a pretty good week. I got in, uh, you know, some solid workouts. This is the first week where my legs actually felt good. Um, I didn't have any like issues pain wise with like, uh, I don't know. I feel like I feel like the weights that I could use were limiting because I would feel like weird aches and pains and stuff in my knees. And yeah, this this last week, it just, it was gone. So um, I'm doing legs again today. So that's something that is uh, looking forward to that anyway, to see how um, things are going with all that. Um, what else? I, uh, what else? There's something else I wanted to talk to you guys about. What's up? Hello, KN, Matthew, Tom, hello, Tommy, Barry, what up, dude? Physique 11, what's going on? I'll get to your questions in a minute. Tattered Tanner, what's up, dude? He's out in Miami. Yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit nicer than uh, out here right now. Um, yeah, yeah, Miami would be would be nice right about now. Uh, what's up? Still dreaming, Jason. Hello, uh, Fit Dad. Still dreaming. Travis, Denny, Bruce. Hello, everybody. What's going on? Um, what, what was I talking about? I can't even fucking remember what I was going to go into. <laughs> You're not liking the snow. I mean, there hasn't been much snow, you know. I mean, the other day it was like snowing a little bit, but it didn't stick. So, I mean, it's hasn't been too bad. But, uh, I, I can't remember what, I had a, I had a point I was getting to. Um... Here, let's get a little bit of this going. Just not too loud for you guys. Um, let's see. The dudes are pouring in. Hello. Unlisted YouTube video is his name. Hello. Uh, Vig Vigilia. What's up in Milwaukee? <clears throat> All right. Hell, let's just get with this question. Would you ever use MPP DECA again? And if not, why? I mean, yeah, I would use it. I, I, I mean, I would never say never on anything, really. I mean, I have before, I have before, but you know, nowadays, I mean, going through the stuff that I've been doing and going through the last year, you know, it's like, I mean, I, I would, I would certainly use it. I just, I, I don't like, if not, why? Like, I just don't see the need for it. You know, I don't see the need for it right now. I don't see the, the point. Like I, I'm, I'm satisfied with the progress that I've got rolling. You know, I, I just, you know, I, it, testosterone grows tissue. Voltron says Decavar and 18 I use grows tissue. I mean, fucking steroids grow tissue, dude. Like it's, it's pretty fucking simple, you know? Um, use gear, <laughs> use steroids, grow. Like that's, that's the way it fucking works. Um, you know, I, I, the reason why I don't really care to go back to NPP or equipoise is I, I, like, I'm happy with how things are going. I just don't see the point. Like, I mean, I'm, I, I, how much, <laughs> Like, 
At this point, with what I'm doing, the main thing that I need to bring back up is my legs, you know, to catch up to my upper body. I've grown my upper body without that shit. <laughs> you know, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't, like clearly, you know, I got to 280 pounds with no legs. Like, think about that. I got to 280 pounds with no fucking legs. <laughs> um, yeah, why well, screw up a good thing? You know, I mean, I like, if you like it, like, use it. Forgotten friend says, MPP blows me up. Bro, it all blows you up. Steroids blow you up. <laughs> so does testosterone. <laughs> it all blows you up, man. <clears throat> you just gotta use it. It all blows you up. What are we? <laughs> I don't know. I think the whole little thing where people are like, yeah, it gives me this other kind of fullness. I get a density from it that I just don't get from anything else. Like MPP Decker really adds a lot of strength to me, but it messes with my head too much. I mean, the, the other thing, like I feel like a lot of guys end up chasing strength entirely too much like chasing strength above all else like it's going to work for some people but for a lot of people it's just going to lead to injuries you know for a lot of people they're just gonna they're gonna try to progress entirely too fast and they're gonna get hurt you know and they're like well trained by jp's not hurt i mean he has said many times he always has something on his body that's feeling a little fucked up. But he's also been training the way that he's been training for a fucking decade, you know? He's not he's not making massive jumps every week in his strength. He's he's adding a pound here, 2 pounds there, a donut like he's adding very small amounts. None of none of us do that, <laughs> you know? None of us fucking do that. When we're all trying to progressive overload, we're fucking adding 25s. We're making a week, like adding 10 pounds, 15 pounds. Like nobody's adding two and a half pounds because we're all fucking impatient. <laughs> like you're just, <laughs> and none of you will be JP. I mean, let's be real, but you know, like, sure, you can you can go after your logbook, but you still have to make you have to you almost have to, like, hold yourself back to a certain amount of progress. That's not going to fuck you up because that's that's the biggest problem is guys, they they make jumps in the ways that they use that. Sure, they can do it. Sure, the muscle can handle it. The nervous system can handle it. But guess what can't handle it? Your fucking connective tissue, your fucking tendons, they can't handle it. They can't handle those quick jumps. They can for a little bit until they don't, and you don't know when that's gonna happen. So like these guys that are super fucking strong, they've been slowly getting stronger for years, years and years and years, going slowly, progressing. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't try to focus on chasing strength. You know, if you're going in the gym and you're training hard, you're pushing your sets to failure, you're having good workouts, you're eating your food and taking your drugs, you are making progress. It's that simple. Eat your food, take your drugs, train hard. You're going to make progress. It just takes time. Like it, th these blow ups and cut down that you see, you know, like guys like me, you know, where I'll go through, I'll go to a cut or I'll go off and then I'll come back on and I'll go from fucking 260 to 280. And like, that's not legitimate muscle. That's just shit filling back up and coming back down. Like it's not anything 
to be like, to get in your head and be like, oh, I need to make 10 pound jumps every week. Like that's not the way it works. You're not gonna legitimately be able to see a 10 pound, you know, contractile tissue gain in a month. Like you're not gonna be able to physically see that. You'll see a little more fullness in an area, sure, but I mean, that's why I, I always say, compare the end of a cut to the end of the cut, compare the end of a bulk to the end of a bulk. Stop trying to compare when guys go from contest to off season. He gained 80 pounds. <laughs> like, yeah, no, <laughs> I don't know. It's like, you know, you know, if you trained hard for that workout, like, you know, whether or not you got the job done, you know, deep down, you know, and what needs to be done is if you're going hard and you don't know, you think you're going hard. That's where you got to find somebody. That's where you got to, you it's just like anything else. You know, if you want to get better at a certain type of business, like you need to go find somebody that's doing that business better than you and try to hire them to help you. You know, like go get a personal trainer that's going to push you. Go go get a training partner. Just get a training partner. Get somebody free. Find a guy that's bigger in the gym that looks like he goes harder than you and go talk to him. You know, he might blow you off. You might say, fuck you, leave me alone. I'm training hard right now. Or he might, you know, you might be surprised and he might be like, sure, you can do some sets with me and see, see how the, the next level looks, you know, and then take that with you and keep going. So I feel, I feel like the whole training side of thing is, is getting ridiculous because it's like that's supposed to be our fun time that's supposed to be the easy shit easy but hard you know go in fuck shit up get out <laughs> it's it's not it's not and then you just keep doing it year on year and 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 go focus on other shit go Go get better at your business. Go make more fucking money so you can buy some more growth hormone. You know, like quit, quit sitting around worrying about. Why isn't my total testosterone higher? Why am I injecting this much? And yeah, I don't know. Like why? Like quit worrying about stupid shit. Go get better in other things in life. Take your drugs, eat your food, train hard and, and get on with it. Mr. Gamer, what's up? Just added T3 to my stack, 25 micrograms in the morning, 25 micrograms before bed. Yeah, I've used a lot of T3. I've used a lot of T3. I've used way too much T3. Um, I don't really recommend it, honestly. It's gonna take me fucking forever to eat all this. I'm trying to like stay away from the mic so you guys don't hear me chew. Yeah, no, I've used T I've used up to 150 micrograms of T3 a day. It's awful. <laughs> and that was a long time ago. That was a very long time ago when I was stupid, didn't know what I was doing. I was just like, oh, T3 is the fat burner. I'm just take more, burn more fat. <laughs> like it doesn't work that way. And it can fuck you up. Like, you know. I don't, I don't use T3 at all anymore, really. I, I mean, T4 is way more important to me anyway. You know, because like your T3 is going to be made from your T4. Like the reason to use T3, the reason, a reason to use T3 is when you're dieting down and your thyroid starts slowing down. Like if you're paying attention to your blood work, which most of you aren't, like if you're going out and you're getting your blood work done and you're looking at your thyroid numbers, if your T3 starts going down, then sure, add it in. 
but I would never just throw it in a stack as like a primary fat burner as like that's that's what we're, we're going to use this to burn fat like I would I would use 25 micrograms on a guy if I saw his t3 levels were dropping deep into a diet and it's it's not even likely that that would happen you know like most people are going to give up before they get to that point But the other thing that you got to look at is like what kind of damage is being done if you're taking too much T3, you know, because that was like one thing that really opened my eyes when I was abusing it. And again, this was like 10, 12 years ago. Like I vividly remember like what apartment I was living in, what I was doing. And uh, I remember laying on my bed. I was on like 125 micrograms a day, somewhere between 100 and 150. And I was laying on my bed and I'd been there for, I was just chilling, you know, relaxing on my phone, whatever. I should have been in a state of rest, complete state of rest. And I remember laying there and hearing my heart beating. And it was super nose when I could feel it in my chest. And it was just like, do, 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 do. And I was like, what is that? And, and it wasn't slow. I was like, what the hell is going on here? And uh, so I had a, you know, a, a watch on that could read. Did I have a watch on that could read my heart rate? I had a watch on and I feel like I, I counted, I feel like at the time I didn't have a watch that would just read heart rate. Like that was something that was getting, becoming relatively new, the wrist monitors. So like, that's how long ago it was. Yeah. I didn't have, I didn't have, they didn't have Apple watches then. So like I was counting my beats and watching the clock for 15 seconds and then multiplied it by four. And I was at like 90 beats minimum just laying there and I had been laying there for like 30 minutes and that was a huge eye-opener where I was like oh that's not good like why is my resting heart rate fucking 90 you know like that's how you get fucking real high blood pressure that's how you get left ventricular hypertrophy like that's how you mess shit up especially if you're doing that for an unknown period of time, just months on end, just trying to get skinny, you know, just trying to get leaner, just trying to get some sort of abs, not tracking how long you're doing anything. You're just fucking doing it. So yeah, I don't recommend T3 at, at all. I would say, uh, I would rather go the T4 route and let your body utilize the T4 and convert it as it needs to, to keep T3 where it needs to be. Um, you know, Clen, yeah, Clen will also do that. And with these things, like the, the danger is in the dose, of course, but like with these things, like that's why I keep track of that. You know, when I use Clen, like I, I'm, I'm a fan of Clen. I like Clen, but I'll use it at a reasonable dose where I am monitoring my resting heart rate and making sure that it's not going above a 70. You know, which even a 70, I, I'm like not comfortable with it being that high, but like even when I'm on everything, you know, all the growth hormone, all the test, all the Primo, Clen, T4, like when I'm doing all of it, my resting heart rate will still be a 65, which I know it's not amazing, but it's pretty fucking good for that, you know, and when I come off of everything and bring everything down and take a breather because I'm sick of injecting so much, my resting heart rate will drop into the 50s, you know, 55, 50, I've even seen like a 48 or a 47. Um, yeah, you got to pay attention to this stuff. Like you don't just, I just, I wouldn't take things especially for a lot of us, you know, that aren't even competing. Like a lot of you guys don't even compete or you're not even competing at like a high level. You know, if you're going for a national level show, if you're, going, if you're a pro trying to win some fucking money, 
then yeah, your health is gonna have to be set aside to, to go beyond, you know, to, to get the job done. But that is not something that any of us that aren't competing should have to resort to at all. You know, like some of you guys talking about wanting to do a carb load sodium depletion peak week to go on vacation and, and get on the beach. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, the fact that you're 12% body fat anyway is going to be better than 95% of the fucking people you see on the beach anyway. Like, just go to the beach and just look around and see the people that are out there. You know, don't be so damn hard on yourself. You don't have to look like a fucking body. Like, you don't need to be shredded because all of those people are already going to think that you're shredded at 12%. Like we are extremely hard on ourselves. Don't, don't be taking diuretics to go to the fucking beach. Especially when you're like 12% body fat or something like that. Like 12% is, is fine. Like I'm not calling that fat. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like, you're not gonna see the result that you wanna see from trying to do a peak week when you're 12% body fat. Like you'd be way better off just eating normal and showing up because you won't be flat. You won't be dehydrated. Like you're going on the goddamn beach. It's going to be hot, sunny. You're going to be sweating. You don't need more of that, you know? I don't know. There's some of the shit that I hear. All right. I got some super chats. <laughs> S225 with a $5 chat. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Possible for an enhanced lifter to build decent legs with only leg pressed extensions and curls. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. No squatting at all. Yeah, there's been there's been plenty of guys that have built legs with no squatting. Absolutely. There is no there is no mandatory exercise. There is no mandatory exercise that you must do to get huge. There are zero mandatories, just like there's zero mandatory drugs. I mean, fuck, you can get big with any drug. You're gonna need to take a drug, but you, you can get big with any drug. I just prefer to choose the ones that will make it the easiest on me in more ways than one. But no, you do not need to squat, to get huge legs, you know, and, and I'm not saying that from personal experience because my legs are not great and I squat. <laughs> I mean, take that from me. I'm somebody that has that that is the last person that needed knee surgery and taking leg days off to recover from that. You know, I'm the last person that needed that time off because my legs need to be coming up if I'm gonna do anything competitive at all. And I love squatting. It, it didn't help me at all, but I'm gonna keep squatting because I just, I love squatting. Like that, that's fun for me. I wanna get back to squatting because I enjoy that, you know? I, I don't wanna go into the gym and do lifts that I don't enjoy or leave out lifts that I, I really wanna do you know, especially when it's something that's as relatively as safe as squatting, which brings me to another point, like bench press. Like I love, I, I love bench press. I haven't bench pressed in a long time because the, the danger is just, it's too high. However, I don't see anything wrong with getting on a bench press, a barbell flat bench press and doing like a weight that's not going to injure you, <laughs> you know, I think it would be relatively safe to say that make the cap on the weight be 225, <laughs> you know, like you don't see people ripping their chest with 225. 
But that doesn't mean if you're 135 pounds, put 225 on and go repping like a fool, you know? I, I mean, like for me, like what I'm saying is like, if I was gonna throw bench press back into a routine of mine, a normal flat barbell bench press, if I was gonna throw that back in, I would put it at the very end of my workout and it would just be an all out, like fucking doing the combine, like however many fucking reps I can get, go for it. And for me, like that would be like putting 225 on the bar would be like doing push-ups, you know, for me. So, I mean, it'd be a little harder than push-ups, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not going to be a weight that's just going to cause a pec tear, you know? I stopped bench pressing because I was at the point where I was like, you know, doing sets with 365, 405, and I was getting scared because things were starting to feel unsafe. And I was just like, this isn't worth it to me. But, you know, anyways, I'm just saying, like there is no absolute mandatory anything in this, you know? So yeah, go hard, go hard on the leg press, leg extensions, leg curls, you know? A lot of the time, something we're thinking about is like the hardest exercises we do, the exercise that we don't want to do, you know, unfortunately, a lot of them come with the most benefit, a lot of them come with a lot of the most risk reward. But so imagine like how hard squats are because it is a full body exercise compared to something like a leg press, leg extension, leg curl. Let that motivate you to go that much harder on things like a leg press or a leg extension or a leg curl, you know? If you're not gonna be able to do a whole lot of pressing type exercises, just bury yourself on anything else that you have available. Uh, Mason Page with the $5 super chat, thanks buddy. Wanting to try slash add NPP it seems the sides come from having high E2. Which AI should I order with it? Anything else to know about NPP? If you guys have watched my uh, cycle building video, I uh, like I have I have Nandrolone in there. I have NPP as something that you can throw in there. But the way that I go about setting it up, and that video is, uh, let me see real quick. Let me bring this up. Um, share screen. So here's <clears throat> my channel. Um, let's see, not the first cycle video. Let's go. Um, this one. Let's talk about. So this video, I, uh, I go over how I would, you know, do something like that. And at the end, I have this little rundown. And basically kind of the way that things go, you know, watch the whole video, first of all, that'll kind of explain this a little bit better. But what you end up with is kind of something that looks like this, as much test as you can handle. And then, you know, 50 to 70% of your test dose will probably be NPP or not NPP, Primo or Masteron. And then the remaining 25 to 50% of your test dose is, is NPP. So like if you do a gram of test, you do 500 Primo and 250 NPP. But what, what I'm saying is the way that we get to this end result is starting with the testosterone and getting testosterone and Primo figured out, getting those things figured out, or you can forego the Primo, you can forego the Masteron, get on as much test as you can handle with your AI so that everything is good, set in stone. You're, you're happy with what you're using. 
you know, all that's good. And then once everything's, once everything's set, then add in the NPP. You know, um, Mason says currently on 400 tests, 300 mass might swap mass for primo to control E2. I mean, have you gotten blood work? You know, go get blood work. See where you're at right now with that. Um, but yeah, I, I would, I would like, since you're already like using these kinds of things, pay attention to it. Pay attention to what your estrogen's doing. I would probably, you know, consider, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I would consider going higher with the test, a little higher with the master on, and then if everything feels good there, add in the Primo, but, or NPP, but like, even if, even if, you know, you're just getting started with this and you don't want to increase these, like, let's say you just want to add in NPP and go on with your life. You know, I would get blood work, make sure that your test and estrogen levels are all sorted. Because like, let's say you're on this, let's say you're using this and your estrogen levels are, I don't know, like 80. Let's say they're, they're an 80 when the range is like, what, 20 to 50 or something like that. Like, let's say, let's say you're at an 80 with this. Like it's, it's a, just a, a guess, a shot in the fucking dart. It's not real, but let's say that that's what it is. If that was the case, I probably wouldn't change anything and just add in Arimidex or uh, Aromacin at you know a real small dose to start off because the worst thing that you can do is crash your estrogen. So you don't want to do that. But I would say, you know, you could do start simple, take half of an Arimidex or half of an Aromacin on Mondays and Thursdays. Do that for a couple weeks, go get your estrogen checked again and see where that puts you. If that dropped you down into like the 50 to 60 range, then it's like, oh, okay, maybe maybe this is a good spot to try adding in the NPP. And then if you kept if you kept the 400 test 300 mast, I mean, you could probably go, you know, start start low, ease yourself into it, start with 100 NPP. Give it a couple weeks, go to 200 MPP, give it a couple weeks. But then from there, like if you wanted to add in more gear, I would probably start leaning into testosterone, Masteron. I would start bringing those up if you wanted to bring in more milligrams before I added any more MPP. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's that. What's up, Rick? What would you say a reasonable dose of Clen is? Reasonable? I mean, 40 to 60 micrograms is pretty reasonable, I would say. Um, I feel like a lot of people start on 20. They start on 20, give it a week, go to go to 40, give it a week, go to 60, give it a week, go to 80, give it a week, go to 100, give it a week, go to 120. All of these things, whether or not you keep pushing up depends on your resting heart rate for me. If my resting heart rate started climbing and got to the point where it was like 70, and let's say I was on 100 micrograms of clen at that point, then I wouldn't go to 120. So, you know, let that guide you on how high you go. But I mean, the range is anywhere from 20 to 100 micrograms a day. Now, keep in mind, um, our good friend Roman Fritz I believe he said last year his clen dosage per day. I think he said, I think he said it was only like he told us it was like, I think he was taking 40 a day. I think he was taking 20 in the morning and 20 at night or something like that. So keep that in mind. You know, you don't need a lot. I mean, Roman, of course, Roman's the top of his game, but I'm just saying, like, take it easy. <laughs> what do you feel are the benefits of Clen? Well, the 
faster metabolism. <laughs> I mean, it's if you're going to use a fat burner, it's a fat burner, <laughs> you know. Um. <laughs> Uh, why do people say it's a guarantee you'll get fat using Novolog without HGH? Um, why do people say that? They're just uninformed. They just don't know what's going on. But also, I mean, it's probably because they've seen it time and time again. We've seen it happen with a lot of people because the people that are doing it just don't know exactly what they're doing. You know, it's, it's more about that. It's more about the people that are using the insulin don't know the right way to go about using their insulin. Like, that's the that's the big thing, you know. I mean, because if you're not in a surplus, how is it possible to get fat? Like, you're not just going to take insulin and while you're in a 500 calorie deficit and start putting on fat like a freak. Like, it, that, that doesn't, that's not going to happen. It's impossible, you know. The reason that people tend to get fat when they add in insulin with or without growth hormone is because they add in way too many carbs with it on top of like they don't they don't have their diet set up anyway. They don't have anything set in stone anyway. They're just fucking eating and they're already kind of fat. You know, I mean, that's 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 a whole other thing. Like the vast majority the people out there, like I was saying, when like you go on the beach, people think 12% is shredded. Those fat people on the beach see you at 12% body fat and they're like, look at that fucking guy. He's shredded. Where in the bodybuilding world, which is why we're so fucked up in the head, 12% is kind of like, mm, it's you're getting to the end of that bulk, you know? So like... And that's that you, know, you get a guy that's 15% body fat and he's like, I want to use insulin. I want to get huge. I need this. This is going to build muscle. It's like, well, you're, you're already fat and you just get more fat because <laughs> you're, you're not eating properly. You're just eating whatever. And you add insulin. And you think I need to eat more with my insulin. And you just, you just, you're just eating entirely too much, you know? What are you saying? So if I, so I just add like a few I use for shits and googles pre and post, it won't make me, no. No, I mean, what you have to consider is like, what are you doing right now? What, what exactly does your diet look like right now? And are you getting fatter eating the current diet that you are on? If you're maintaining if the diet that you're doing right now, you are maintaining on or even losing weight on, you can absolutely add in a few IUs. It's not going to really do much, but like, yeah, you can add it. It's not going to make you fatter. It's not. So, but yeah, the, the reason that people say that, the reason that it happens to people is because those those people just don't know what they're doing. They're just eating entirely too much. They don't have anything controlled. You know, they're taking their insulin and they're going to, I don't know, whatever they're doing, they're eating way too much with way too much fat in it. You know, I was trying to think of like a fast food place that they're going to and just slamming a bunch of whatever. What's up, dude, with the $5 Super Chat Vigilia Eternus prescription for 400 tests, 200 deca. Would you suggest injecting two times a week or daily? Those are the only options. We got two times a week or daily. No in between. One milligram and a strazzle anyway. Either way, I in US, so only use prescription meds. insulin at McDonald's. Um, well, why is two times a week or... or daily the only two options? Like, why not three times a week? Why not four times a week? Why not five times a week? Why not six times a week? You know, there, there, there's everything in between. I recommend 
if you're like new to this and just trying to figure shit out, I remember I, I, I recommend doing as often of shots as possible to start. Go daily, start there, keep your shot volume super low, you know, because when you've got virgin muscles, you don't want to be doing big, big shots, you know. You don't want to be doing milligram or milliliter shots and all that. Like, keep keep your shot volume low, do it daily, and then adjust as needed. You know, like if I could go back and start over again, I wish, I really wish I would have thought, I knew daily was an option. I would have done daily and, and slowly moved my way to four shots a week, to three shots a week. Like right now I do three shots a week, you know. I don't recommend you copy me, but like I'm adjusted to exogenous hormones. I'm a, I, my body is adjusted to that and I can handle three shots a week without side effects, without the negatives of it. So like for me, I do three shots a week. Each of those days, I do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Each of those days, I do six milliliters each day. Okay, I do, I do three milliliters on one side of my body, three milliliters on the other side of my body. My option is either that or do three milliliters every day but one day to do what I want to do, you know? And I just don't want to be bothered pinning every day. I've been doing this for so long, I don't want to fucking inject every day anymore, <laughs> you know? But the fact that I can do three times a week and not have negatives then th there's no reason for me to force myself to do it more often. So that's what I'm saying is if you need to do daily, absolutely do daily. And if you don't know then I would start with daily and work backwards from there. So most people I say do daily, you're, you're going to be better off. Absolutely starting there as opposed to going two times a week and trying to correct that you know because like if you if you just go straight into two times a week and say you get a ton of acne from it you get super bloated from it and then it's like well fuck uh okay now i'm gonna go to three times a week maybe that's gonna fix it and then it doesn't fix and you go to four times a week it doesn't fix you know so start the safer route and move towards something else. I gotta eat, damn it. My food's gonna get cold. <clears throat> what we got here? Hmm. Any supplement that can help with mental health? Dealing with jealousy issues? Um, I would say, uh, I don't know. If you're having jealousy issues, like you probably shouldn't be in a relationship. I mean, I would say you probably shouldn't be trying to get yourself in any relationships because whether or not you're jealous or not, that's going to be, uh, that's going to be like an, your own, like, like confidence kind of thing, self-worth kind of thing, build yourself up, think higher of yourself. Have some confidence in yourself and your relationship. You know, um, the jealousy tends to show up above 750 milligrams of test. Yeah, I wouldn't blame it. I wouldn't blame it on the test. I agree with Matthew. 
Yeah, I don't think that's a steroid problem. Matthew's nailing it. <laughs> that's a you problem, dude. Um, and then, you know, if we want to go even further into it, I mean... Do you really even need to be using 750 milligrams of test? Like, what else are you using? You know. Um, yeah. Jealousy equals insecurity. Focus on yourself. I've, I've, I have not had jealousy issues. Um, and I'm on 3,000 milligrams of test. <laughs> it's not a testosterone thing. Uh, the legendary Balkan. With the $5 super chat, thank you, sir. Are there any natural PDs? No. <laughs> All right. Or ones that don't adversely affect fertility besides growth hormone. Um, I mean, you know, that, that's where you're getting into the whole, like, HCG monotherapy and, and in clomiphene, in clomiphene monotherapy or clomid monotherapy. Like that's when you're looking at that kind of stuff. Not anything that's going to make a significant difference. That being said, <clears throat> that being said, it's like going on unnatural, <laughs> unnatural, <laughs> Un Going on unnatural PEDs does not guarantee you're going to lose fertility. Like I've been blasting gear for 14 years and I just had a kid. You know, you can, using gear does not mean fertility is gone. It does not mean your fertility is fucked. All right. Like you can 100% still make a baby. Like there's going to be some people that won't be able to, but I think it's pretty rare. You know, when we have things like HMG and FSH that are going to force sperm production. Yeah, I'm I'm convinced the people that lose fertility just have like would have lost their fertility without steroids as well. You know, like if they can't get it back with FSH or HMG, like I think you would have been fucked anyway. But you can absolutely, absolutely still make a, uh, a kid, which uh, brings me to my next point. Hello, baby. <laughs> oh, see, you can build a baby. <laughs> oh, hello. She's so cute. She does not sleep. Not during the day. Actually, she was sleeping a shitload today, but. All right, all right, I need to get this off here. <laughs> um, you can build a baby. <laughs> I've been on gear for 14 years. 14 years, steroids, unnatural. All the fucking steroids, all the trend, everything. Everything. I've been on it all, except for the really stupid stuff like Trestalone and DHB and stuff like that. But I've been on I've been on all the fucking steroids. 
you can, I, I'm, I'm confident you can absolutely bring your fertility back. So, you know, I, I, yeah, I would not, I would not worry about that. But yeah, outside of what you already, you know, what you already know, HCG, Clomid, and Clomiphene, that kind of stuff. I mean, that's it. HGH. Everything else is, and even that stuff is not, not going to do much for you. Hmm. We've got beef, rice, potato, bell peppers, um, spinach, and bone broth. This is from the Vertical Diet. This is a Vertical Diet meal. This is their meal prep food. I like it. I like it a lot. What I don't like about it. <laughs> what I don't like. There is just a little bit, there is just a little bit of false advertising, <laughs> unfortunately. But I'm, I'm fine with it. I'll make it work. I don't care. But I was not expecting, I was not expecting this. Um, so you gotta order these meals from the Vertical Diet And I'm sure Stan already knows this. I have not reached out to him yet about it. I'm sure people have complained about this. Expand on the false advertising. Yeah. Um, the macros are not what the website says, unfortunately. The macros do not match. That's a bummer. But I'm still gonna eat it. Cause it's not like I can, I can work with it. It's just not what I, I thought I was getting. It's not what I thought I was getting, but I, I still like it. I'm still going to work with it. I still like it. All right. So let me bring this up for you guys. Here's what uh, the website says. This is the meal that I, I'm having right now. The monster mash deluxe meal it says 40 protein, 15 fat. 49 carb. One, one second, I'm going to go grab one out of my fridge right now that has all the packaging on it. All right, so the biggest discrepancy that we have Here, let me, let me go back. Remember, you, okay, we got 40 protein, 15 fat, 49 carbs. The most important one to remember here is 15 fat, <laughs> okay? Oh, it's backwards, but you can see on the end, it says 24. 24. I was not expecting to see a, about a 10 gram fat difference. <laughs> and I believe, I believe it. I believe that it's 20, like this is, <laughs> it's, 
it's good. <laughs> like, I like it. It is good. But I can tell, yeah, there is definitely, there's definitely like 25 grams of fat in this. <laughs> when I'm done eating it, the bottom of this thing is shiny. <laughs> It is, it is good though. Mm hmm. It's very good. But I mean, it says on it, it's 90, 10 ground beef. Um, and it also, it, so it has that for the beef. It's like, that's, in, in my book, that's pretty fatty beef anyway. But on top of it, they add extra virgin olive oil. It's like, th there's extra fat being added to this as well. So, you know, I mean, you could look at it a couple different ways. Um, the way I see it is... You know, a lot of us anyways, we don't even count the fat that's in the meat. Like, we don't, we don't even care. We don't even bother with it. Just like, I mean, it is what it is. And we just count added fats. You know. Like, I would say that this might be 15 grams of olive oil added to it. You know, 15, 15 grams of fat of olive oil worth. 10 to 15. Um, like, you could call that a meal that has... 10 grams of added fats to it. But like I said, you know, I, I was disappointed to see that, but it's not gonna stop me for me. Like I can work with that, it's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll make it work. But I, I do wish that it was actually 15 grams as opposed to 24 grams of fat. Um, so yeah, kind of, kind of, <laughs> kind of a bummer. When I first saw that, I was like, Damn, 20, 24 grams of fat? Because the way that I'm using these, the way that I'm utilizing them is doing three. I, I eat three of them a day. I like guess fucking 75 grams of fat just from those meals, you know. It's fine. I can work with it. But just my other meals are going to have zero fat in them. <laughs> but that was my game plan. Three of these a day, and then three of my own meals a day that are basically fat-free now. So. They are very good, though. I do like this a lot. Like, these showed up Wednesday. Every single day I've had three of them. And it has not been hard. I haven't gotten sick of it. Like, I put hot sauce in it. The first couple days I ate them plain and, you know, they were good. Adding hot sauce to it takes it to another level. So, like, they're great. I really like them. Um, I've, I ordered more. I ordered another batch. Um, but, like, this first... This first batch. All what I wanted was the Monster Mash. I ordered 24 of them. I was planning on eating three a day. That would last me eight days. Or a week if my wife decided to have some randomly, you know. Um, the second batch, which will probably show up Wednesday again. Um, I got four different things. So... I don't remember what I got, honestly, but I got four different things and six of each one. Um, but anyways, um, vertical diet meals, very, very good. But I'm like, I bought a, a variety this time and tried to choose like the lowest fat ones that they had to choose from because I just want to see what the actual macros are on all of them. Um, and, you know, we'll... We'll go from there, but. All right. Um,
What's Psycho to look like the main guy in Roadhouse UFC film? I mean... You talking about Jake Gyllenhaal? Well, I mean, number one... Um, number one, you gotta get a lot better looking, for starters. I mean, because that is one very handsome man, first of all. Um, you know, don't don't get Brokeback Mountain good looking, but yeah. Um, so, Roadhouse. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Not what I wanted. Um, I wanted to just look at this picture. All right, so what cycle to get like this? Is that what we're going for? Is this like, is this gonna be like the new Fight Club? Is this gonna be like the new Fight Club look? I wanna look like Brad Pitt in Fight Club. I wanna look like Jake Gyllenhaal in Roadhouse. Or were you talking about Connor? <laughs> um, no, I mean, yeah, I mean, this is, this is, uh, number one is be lean. <laughs> Don't get broke back mountain. Good looking. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I mean, number one is you gotta be fucking lean. You gotta be lean as hell. You know, I mean, he's, he's in good shape here. Um, but yeah, it doesn't take much. You know, it, it won't take much. Like he's all upper body too. Like, like you can see, like his legs are, like his his. It's like he literally just split, split his waist down the middle, and he, you know he's got his two legs hanging out here. You see, <laughs> half of his leg is half of his torso. So like, first of all, no legs. Don't work out. Don't do squats. Don't do your legs. Um, number two, get super fucking lean. And then, yeah, is he 180 pounds at six foot here? I mean, yeah, guys, that's not, that's not much beyond, that's not much beyond fucking TRT, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, I mean, this could very easily be <laughs> 300 test with some Anavar thrown in there. But the most important thing is fucking dieting, you know, because if you're somebody that's 20% body fat, it doesn't matter what drugs you use, you're not going to get that lean first of all. Like that's the most important thing here is just get lean first. His core looks blown out. He's got Palumboism. <laughs> Well, I mean, how old is, is Jake? What's his age? I mean, is he get, he's getting up to that age where it's like your waist just kind of slowly gets thicker. Like that's something that is, is you know, a, what a lot of us have to deal with as we approach 40 and, and, and you know, beyond. Like, is he, uh, is he almost 40 now? I feel like he's about my age, maybe a little older. He's 43. Yeah, I mean, he's 43. Like... He looks great for 43 for, you know, not in the bodybuilding world, but like this is the guy, you know, shows up to the beach and everybody's like, this guy's fucking shredded. Look at this guy. Holy hell. Look at him. Look at this guy. He's shredded. <laughs> That's a pretty good, pretty good shot. It's got some good, good lighting, good, good editing there. Um, but yeah, I mean... This is, this is like the look that people would go crazy for at the beach. Like, look at this fucking guy. But bodybuilding standards, like, you know, it's, not, it's he's, get, he's getting started. Yeah, normal crowd thinks he looks insane. I mean, yeah, yeah, they do. Um, how old is he? How 
How old is he? 43. Yeah, he's 43. Yeah, man. I mean, <laughs> two out of ten, not paying. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, first of all, you got to be good looking. Second of all, get lean. Thirdly, you don't have to do legs. Fourthly, I mean, it's fucking TRT and Hanabar. But, but if you're, again, if you're not lean, like, you're not going to build... Like, he's barely b bigger than, than what, like, I mean, even some naturals could probably get there, honestly. But, like, if you're going to, if you're going to use drugs, you're going to use drugs. But it's not going to be a whole lot, you know. So, it doesn't, it doesn't take much for, for that. <laughs> yeah, do CrossFit. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I think a woman doing CrossFit could get his physique. A man, though, I feel like men just don't get good physiques when they do CrossFit. They just, like, shrivel up. They get stringy. You know, a man on, on steroids and doing CrossFit, like, a guy on a cycle, most, most people would be happy looking like that. Not bodybuilders so much, but, yeah. Ah, uh, you're 65. Well... I mean, you got one foot in the grave, right? So I'd probably just give up. Yeah, I'd probably just, I'd probably just give up at this point. I'm just kidding. You'll live forever. Yeah. But there's no way you're gonna get to looking like Jake. I mean, you're 65, come on, bro. <laughs> 65, nobody lives that long anymore. What the hell, bro? COVID should have taken care of you already. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. They're going to cancel my channel. Um, but yeah, for real, like... Number one, be lean. Like, he, he's just lean. That's all. You know? 95% of people could probably do that naturally. But we have the drugs available, so why not, right? But yeah, it's not going to be much. It's not going to take much to get there. Um, do you recommend jab, GHIV? No. <laughs> um, uh, what's this? I remember Rich Piana saying, some people's balls could shrink so much from roids that they'd suck back inside their bodies. Sounds like a troll to me. But I don't know. Um, I mean, the, what ha what happened? Yeah, that that it may as well happen to a lot of guys. It may as well happen because, like, what? Like the whole thing about nuts shrinking to the size of raisins. Like that's not an exaggeration. Like some guys really do deflate. To like, I don't even have something that's the size of a raisin in here to show. Like. They, some, for some people, they literally shrink that much. They just completely, completely gone. I mean, if I had a bullet, I would, I don't have any. Um, yeah, like this, like, maybe not so flat, but. Like, yeah, I mean, they might, like, they, you might as well think they sucked up into your body because they're going to be non-existent in your scrote, so. <laughs> your, your face in that picture. Bro, your smile's not helping you. What are you doing? Why are you making that face? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. I don't know, man. 
That sucks. <laughs> Um, <laughs> is that real? <laughs> That's my dad. <laughs> How can I reverse it? You know, okay, so for real. I've been eating this for an hour. For real. Um, a lot of people. <laughs> testosterone. Messes up people's face. Because usually like what happens when guys go on TRT, they go on test. They gain a bunch of weight. Get a bunch of water weight. And it goes into your fucking face. And your face gets bloated. It fills out, and it looks like it's like if you took this face I see what I see. I see what you're dealing with. It's like this was probably your face before. This was probably your face before, and then it just filled out with a bunch of water. Um, right? You see the resemblance? So you take that face, you add a bunch of water and bloat to it, and that's where you're at now. So if you want to get back to this, if you just stopped, <laughs> just stop the test, the bloat will come out, and you'll, you know, you'll be back to normal with that beautiful smile, right? But seriously, like that's what happens. Like guys get on test and and their face bloats. And it's tough to get rid of that if you don't know how to diet. Like it's tough to do it's tough tough to get back to a normal shaped face. I mean, my face is is even fucking bigger. But I mean, the thing is like I've been on fucking gear forever. I'm 100 pounds heavier than when I was when I fucking started. Like your face is going to be bigger. <laughs> You gain 100 pounds, you know, you gain any amount of weight. Like, any amount of weight you gain, your face is going to change with it to a certain degree. Just ruined my face. <laughs> but, for real, like, I feel like we see that a lot. Where, you know, guys who are in the middle of their bodybuilding career... And then when they stop, they come off everything, they lose a hundred pounds or so. Their face goes back, turns into somebody completely different. And it's probably what they kind of were gonna look like before steroids. Because just all the bloat, all the water, all the shit comes out of your face and everywhere else. And you're left with what you had. Right? All right. Hmm. More attractive than it is right now. I 
I mean, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So if you think this face is more attractive, then yeah, yeah, absolutely. But for the people that don't think that this face is more attractive, then I don't really know. I don't really know. All right. Here we go. Joey says my CRP spiked. Went from above five. Now it's 15 three months later. Not on a blast TRT. I didn't even look three months off. Even took three months off from training. So it's not from heavy training. How can I bring this down quickly? Well, the question is, what's what's wrong? What is going on? <clears throat> what is going on in your life that is that caused that, you know? What happened? The only time that I've seen CRPs that high that was not steroid related was from, you know, the virus and the vaccine, you know. So are you sick? No, I, I don't mean whether you're vaccinated or not. I just mean, did, you know, did you get sick recently? I mean, even people that got, even people that got the vax, it's like, they had high CRP for, you know, like a month, and then it went back down. It's not like you would have it years later. So how long ago, how long ago was this, this 15? Like you're sick now, you have the flu now. Are you sure you weren't coming down with something when you did it? Like how long ago was that? A week after the, you're sick, bro. You were sick. <laughs> what are you talking about? It was incubating. <laughs> You, you were sick then. You just, it just wasn't expressing itself yet. Your body was fucking responding, building up something. Yeah, man, you were sick. You know... This is like, <clears throat> this is one of those things where it's like, you can't, I want to be a great opera singer. Some things just aren't in the cards, man. Some things just, some, some things just aren't in the cards. And you just have to accept that. And, uh, and do the best you can with what you got. You know? You just got to do the best you can with what you got. If you have cellulite and loose skin, like it's not, it's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. It's just not. So like you can, you can lose all your fat. It, it's not going to get rid of the loose skin. Like, unfortunately that's going to hang around. Get it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's not, unfortunately there's just some things that 
are out of our control. And I would say that that would definitely be one of them. We think about a halo only cycle. You mean like the very common halo monotherapy, very common. Hold on, one more bite. I think if you literally have no other options, no other options, And somebody's holding a gun to your head and said, take this. The fact of the matter is, we have many options. We have many, many options outside of doing Halo only. So... Maybe, maybe pick, pick one of the other things. <clears throat> yeah, man, you, you were like, you were definitely sick. Like things were building up before you actually felt it physically. I mean, for sure. You were, you had, you had the flu a week after you took bloods and your blood looked like that. Yeah. I mean that absolutely that it's, that was, <clears throat> you just weren't expressing it physically yet. Uh, if someone accidentally double super chatted $30 donation question, would you refund it? Uh, I, if I knew how, I mean, I don't think anybody has. If I figured out how, sure. But if you do it on purpose now, no, I will not. Because you fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> what ingredients are required for a hair what bro look at your head and look at my head what are you going what are look we're both bald <laughs> it's over it's over. It's over, Rambo. Nothing is over. Nothing. You just don't turn it off. <laughs> My friend, he's all over me. And nobody would help. <laughs> Bro, we have no hair. No hair, don't care. Moving on. <laughs> so I got too fat. Do you think if I only eat my protein requirement and nothing else? Uh, 
I want to know. I want to know what love is. I want to know. Wh I want to see a picture of where you were at 186. <clears throat> I would want to see a picture of where you were at at 186. If you were actually lean. Because if you were 186, like a lot of guys just bulk way too fucking soon. And if you were 186 and like 15% body fat, then you're basically natural. No, I think this is a terrible idea. No, this is, it's a terrible idea. But, <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's just a terrible idea. No, you would not keep most of your muscle. Why? I mean, because something that you need to tell your body to hold on to muscle is the ability you have, you still have to perform in the gym. And if you're starving yourself, which if you just ate your protein requirement, you'd be, you know, you would be starving. You wouldn't want to work out. You wouldn't want to do cardio. You wouldn't want to do anything. You wouldn't be able to train hard. You would, lose, you would lose muscle from that alone, not being able to train as hard as you were. You know, like, that's why training intensity is very important. You have to be able to perform. Like, that's why you see, you know, these guys weeks out from their show still training like it's fucking go time. You know, they don't back off. They're not backing off. Because they're trying to hold on to everything that they got. So. So, yeah, I mean, because of that, you definitely wouldn't be able to. You definitely wouldn't be able to. I'm just freaking out because I don't have my V. Your vagina? Had to speak Australian. Vagina. What are you talking about? Like you and virginity. <laughs> Wait, okay. I won't show. Send it to me on Instagram. I'll, I'll see where you're at at 186. Or us and see where you're at now. Like whatever. Send me the pictures. I won't. I won't show. I promise. I won't share it with everybody. I'll look at it and I'll give you a live what I think, but, um, no, it's a terrible idea. How, I mean, like, how long did you spend going from 186 to 205? You know, how long did you spend getting fat? Uh, do it tube. X1 says, thanks for uploading those CPAP videos. They're very helpful. No problem. Those CPAP videos have helped a lot of people because that shit is important. That shit is important. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Steve put out a one hour Halo video going over a bunch of stuff, so. I mean, the way that I look at it, guys, like when it comes to steroids and what to choose and what, what you should do or shouldn't do, um, you know, it's, like I got to, like I'm somebody <clears throat> that is not, uh, a, a hyper responder. Okay. I'm definitely 
somebody that is very average. I've just been doing it a long time. If anybody was using drugs for as long as me and training the entire time and eating, like you should be a relatively big guy. All right. But my point is, my point is, I've gotten to 280 pounds with no legs and I didn't use any of that shit. <laughs> you should be able to, too. You should be able to as well. It just takes time. I don't know. I don't know. Did he accidentally like send something? I know I'm curious. Let's see. No, nobody, nobody sent anything. Cause you can also send like comments on videos that have money attached to them. Um, but nobody did that. So Maybe he did it to somebody else and they wouldn't refund him. Maybe that's what happened. Tommy with the $20. It's going to get me a day's worth of Sarah Stim. Actually half a day's. I appreciate that. That's very nice. They ain't got no legs, yes. Um, four months. He spent four months going from 186 to 205. So you gain 20 pounds in four months. I mean, you should at least be expecting to lose 20 pounds in four months. You know, if you want to do it right. But... I don't know. I, I have a, a suspicion that you were probably a little too fat to begin with. Um, a little, a little too high body fat to be, to begin with, and that just put on just much more fat on top of it. And like in these, in those kinds of scenarios, I'd be like, D you didn't have muscle anyway. You know, you didn't have any muscle anyway. So why not just, just diet properly and get actually lean first and start over again, you know? What about teenagers running Halo for bulk? I mean, that's stupid. That's probably one of the dumbest ideas I've ever seen. Thoughts on IGF-1 LR3. Um, I've gotten to where I am today without it. That's my thoughts on it. I don't think that it's necessary. I think if you've got the cash and the curiosity, go for it. But I haven't needed it to get where I am. I don't think you need it either. But, you know. Whether you do or don't, it has no effect on me. Uh, what's up, Vinny? Been a while since I caught one of these. Been off eight weeks with a bicep tear. I finally cl been cleared to train. Think more bodybuilding style to start back. Best four day split. Push, pull, legs, arms. Push, pull, legs, arms, or no arms, just push, pull, push, pull, legs, rest. I mean, if you want a four day split, if you want four training days, if that's what you mean, push, pull, legs, uh, push, pull, legs, arms. 
spread that out how you want. Monday, Tuesday, push pull. Thursday, Friday, legs, arms. Do you think a guy like him should just run a basic calorie deficit to reset to 186 or would carb cycling be more efficient? I mean, I think carb cycling for anybody is more efficient as long as you can do it properly and stick to it, you know? I think the most important thing is being able to follow it. But that aside, carb cycling is always going to be the better option. How did you get to the point where you can afford all that GH and gear? You are lucky. I mean, I'm 37, I'll be 38 this year. It has not always been like this, <laughs> you know? It hasn't been like this. It's been a long time of working. It's been a long time of overworking and getting underpaid. It's been a lot of time of working for free. You know? <laughs> Ron with the 50. Enjoy the sound of gains. <laughs> I appreciate that. Buddy, I appreciate it. Real OG right there. Um, very, very, very nice. Yeah, man, it's, it, it's just, like when I moved to Chicago in 2010, 14 years ago, almost 14 years ago, um, like I, I had no money. I was broke. I had no idea what I was going to do. I knew one guy up here that was like, come up here, train me. You know, you can live out of my spare bedroom and I'll take care of your bills as long as, you know, you train me, get me in shape. Like he was real fat. He needed help. Um, but like I came up here, gave it, just left everything in Oklahoma basically and came up here, everything that I could pack into my car and uh, <clears throat> trained him for five months, got him in shape, <clears throat> made no money during that time. Like he, like I said, he, he paid my bills. He paid my bills, my food. 
He covered all that. Made zero dollars. Didn't didn't get any any benefit like in that sense from that. And from there, managed to get a girlfriend online dating that lived in the city. Once I was done working with that guy, I moved into the city with no place to live. And I uh, basically was staying with her at night and she, she had, she had to work. She would go to work in the daytime. And so I would leave her place too. I didn't want to just fucking squat there all day, you know, and do nothing. But like she'd leave to go to work. I'd leave as well. I'd get in my car and I'd go drive around, figure out what the fuck I'm going to do. But I had no, no income. Like I had like money that was just sitting there because I wasn't spending anything at the time. But now it's like bills were about to start coming back. And it was just like, so I went to the local gym, got a job. Well, got, went to the local gym because I was like, I need to train, you know, because that was still important to me. I had no job, no money, but I was like, I still need to work out. Went to the gym to get a gym membership. On their little application, they always like, you know, what, what's your job? What do you do? Blah, blah, blah. I was like, I don't have a job. Um, and then after like talking to the guy, he was like, you should get a, you should get a job here. Why don't you get a job here then? And I was like, I mean, I guess. So I got a job as a personal trainer, making $12 an hour, just st starting off. That was with, with a college degree. And basically just lived at the fucking gym, you know, 12 hours a day, just stayed there. When I left, I'd go back to my girlfriend's place, sleep there, get up, go back to the gym, and just hang out all fucking day. Just so that people would see me being there. I would hang out, talk to the sales staff, the sales team, and made friends with them, and they fed me clients. And three months into that, by the end of that three months, I was working, I was training 50 sessions a week in front of people 50 hours a week, 200 hours, 200 sessions a month. And did that for, you know, like five years of going that hard at it. And in that time period, like got bumped to $15, then got bumped to $17, then got bumped to $21, that $21 is when they changed their whole payment system. And then it was like, the more you worked, the more they gave you per hour. So like, I really benefited from that. And that took me to like 32 an hour. And, and at that point, like things were starting to look pretty good, but you know, I was still getting an apartment place with another, like I was still sharing apartments and shit and Still didn't have anything really. Um, by the time I got to that point, like I started a YouTube channel because I thought, you know, my clients were all asking me questions and I was like, what am I, I didn't want to just, I kept repeating myself. So I was like, I'm just gonna make videos instead and my clients can watch my videos to answer all their questions and whatever and learn extra stuff and shit. But in that time period, like when I was first starting out, I didn't know if I was gonna stay in Chicago or not because I wasn't making enough money. I was working, I didn't have a place to stay. I, I lived out of my girlfriend's apartment for a month and a room opened up with one of her friends. So I moved into their place for $200 a month. It was a shit, shit, shit hole. Stayed with them for, it was like six months, then got a, another apartment, or no, then moved, like actually moved in with that girlfriend, got a place with her. 
Stayed there for about a year, then we broke up and I moved into another shithole that was close to the gym. Then that lease ran out, moved to another shithole with a coworker. Stayed there for a year, then moved out of that shithole into another, into a studio where I was finally living alone. And that's when I started my YouTube channel. If you go back and look at my first videos, that's the studio that I was in at that time. I was living alone. Um, but that was seven, eight years ago now. And I didn't make any money, <clears throat> any money on YouTube for five years, you know, um, not from YouTube anyway. But by the time I was like five years in, I had still put out like, I don't even know, like 700 videos. And I was still making nothing. But somewhere in that like time, in the first few years, there'd be a couple random people that would, would email and be like, so what's it cost to be coached by you? And I was like, oh, what? People want to be coached by me? I don't, okay. Um, I was charging a hundred dollars a month for that. And I never had very many people in the start because I didn't have a channel. I didn't have a big reach. I didn't have anything. So it was just like, it was all still pretty much a struggle until 2020. It's like 10 years after college, like I graduated in 2010, 10 years of sh just shit. Like it was just, nobody would want to live like that. You know, I'm sure some people would, but still it was not a good, it was not good. <laughs> it was not good. Yeah, I mean, it was living paycheck to paycheck. I had no, I had nothing saved. I had zero dollars. You know, couldn't like, I, I remember like the random girlfriends that I would have throughout that time period, like the restaurants that we would choose would be based on, like, I would look at the menu to see what things cost. And if it looked like it was too expensive, we wouldn't go. Cause I would just, I, I couldn't afford it. You know, like I just, like, that's the way things kind of were. Um, I was buying the cheapest groceries that I could find. Like, I, I know how it is, but it's just like, it was not, life was very different for 10, from 2010 to 2020. Then, then, you know, everything shut down, the gym shut down and things. And then YouTube gave me the membership option. And with the membership option, and at that time, that's when I started selling carnitine. That's when things really started to get exciting. Um, but yeah, like after being at that gym you know, working my ass off. I left that gym, moved to like a country club gym where I was making 35 an hour. And I chose that because I wanted to work less and focus more on YouTube. So it was still kind of like a struggle through that, but then it was just like, you know, once the membership option was open to my channel and people started signing up for that and, uh, you know, people were paying for my advice like that, that change. I mean, the last three years have been crazy, but you know, if you spread out what I've done like financially the last three years across the last 13 years, cause it makes shit that last 13 years, you spread out what I've done in the last three years in the last 13 years. Like it's not, doesn't add up yet, you know? 
but um, yeah, I mean, it just, and those first like five years on YouTube, like I was getting so many questions. Like the reason I even jumped on the whole membership option was because I was constantly asked, answering questions through emails, through, through Instagram, because I answered everything for free. I was just trying to give out as much information as possible. I was just trying to give as much as I could to get some sort of credit with my viewers, you know? And I still answer most of the comments on my videos, the ones that are worth answering I do, but yeah, it's just, there was a long time where it sucked. <laughs> And that's why I like, I don't know. I tell a lot of people that are brand new, like wanting to just like get into YouTube because they see what it's done for me. And I'm like, be prepared to make nothing. And, and that goes with any business. Like be prepared to make nothing. You need to have a job set up that's holding you over. And it has to be something on the side that you do to, to and you just slowly try to build that up. But like it was a good five years that I was on YouTube where I was working full time and making my videos on the side, trying to get something going with it. And then it finally did. And yeah, from there, I mean, I quit, I quit working at the gym in 2021. And that was scary. <laughs> I remember I had the, the first time I ever thought that I had a panic attack was when I quit and I got in my car to drive home. And I just remember I was driving and I, I, I like couldn't breathe. I was like, what is happening? Like I started freaking out because it was like, I don't have a fucking job anymore. You know, it's like, what if this shit doesn't work out? It was crazy. <sighs> but all through that time, the last 10 years, Nine? The last nine years? Eight and a half years, I was dating my wife now. And through that time, you know, she helped support what I was doing, you know. And I mean, that's part of the reason why I felt like I could leave my job we, was, you know, I had to talk to her about it. And she was like, you know, I mean, if something goes wrong, I mean, you can always go back and start working again, but it's not like it's a rush because she's like, I, I can take care of things for a while because she was smart. <laughs> she was smart through her 20s and saved her fucking money. I don't know how she fucking did it. Well, I do. She, I mean, because she's a teacher, so she doesn't make much in Chicago. But she also did like bartending and all of her bartending money she put in her savings account. So like she had a lot of money set aside, which, you know, eventually bought a house with and, and the place we live in now and just, you know, things would have been a lot more difficult for sure without her help. So, but yeah, it's been, it's been very hard. <laughs> the last three years have been incredible. <laughs> It's been pretty crazy. So, <clears throat> Kenny Pickett fan. 
with the $2 super chat. Do you think TRT 200 milligrams per week would shorten life? Um, in general, no, but I mean, it depends on where you decide to inject it that day, you know? I mean, you can end your life real quick, I think, uh, when you're injecting anything. <laughs> so, um, you know, one, one bad shot to the jugular and yeah, you're done. <laughs> but highly unlikely highly unlikely highly unlikely to have any issues yeah man just keep you just keep going eventually things will turn around and it sucks because you won't know when that's gonna be but if you just keep trying you know It'll come around eventually. I mean, like my best advice to people, especially if you want to get into this whole sphere of stuff, is just give out. Give everything you can for free. And eventually it'll come back around. That's one thing that I couldn't get Victor Black to figure out when we had our conversation. He just didn't, he was like, I had given enough. And it's like, well, it's not, it's not coming back enough. So no, you haven't given enough. What goes around comes around, give it out and it'll come back to you. It doesn't matter if it's all your fucking information, you know, like, like that brings me back to, I've said this so many times on my channel. Like the only reason I ever bought the vertical diet book was because Stan put out so much free content and he just deserved it. I was just like, you deserve this hundred dollars. You just fucking deserve it. I already know everything that's in this book. I know I know everything in this book because you've put it on YouTube already. Like I already have all the information from the videos and seminars that you've given out freely. You deserve this hundred dollars. And I was happy to give it to him. Absolutely happy to give it to him. He could have charged $200 for it. I would have given him $200 for it. I would not have cared because the free help that he had given out even like he, like mess DMing him on Instagram, he he messaged me back every single time. It, he deserves it. And that's where like Victor just couldn't get a grasp of that. Give out more and it will come back. It it, it just that's just the way shit works. And like I said, even if it's all your information, people want to just, you know, because when they're in direct contact with you, like they're going to get little bits and pieces that's a little bit extra that maybe you didn't fully explain in whatever you put out there. Not on purpose, you know. I don't deliberately try to hold stuff back. So. She says, I'm going to have one IU GH for my skin. That's not enough for skin. <laughs> well. Thanks. <laughs> That's... Yeah, Steve, did you just hear? Like, I was just talking about Stan. I was just talking about Stan. Like, that's the whole reason I bought the Vertical Diet. You know, that's the whole reason I bought it, because he just gave it all for free. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's exactly. He couldn't... It is, it is what it is. 
Give it out, it'll come back to you. Do you still aspirate when injecting? No, no, I haven't. I haven't aspirated when injecting. The last time that I aspirated while injecting was when I was IVing carnitine and ephedrine. Because <laughs> you got to make sure you're in the vein, right? You got to make sure you're in there. So you pull a little bit out, you see a little blood squirt in there, and then you slam it home. Back to the real shit. <laughs> but no. When I'm injecting into a muscle, I, 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 th I think I aspirated the first, first couple times that I injected, but no, not, not ever since. I learned there's a mild diuretic in HGH from here last year. Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, sort of. Not an, I mean, I wouldn't say enough to like really offset the. What I mean, the amount of of the excipients in there are so small, you know. But yeah, technically there is in some of them. Your thoughts on mint. I got to where I am today without mint. That's, that's it. I got today, I got to where I am today without mint. I got to where I am today without DHB. I got to where I am today without SARMs. And that, I mean, that's it. You can take that to the bank, bro. That's it. You can get you can get to at least where I am without it. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm like great or anything, but I mean, I feel like I got pretty pretty far. <laughs> I feel like I did all right. You know. And without Nandrolone. I mean, I, I haven't used Nandrolone in a few years. Like, I used it in 20... I think 2020, 2021. I think around there. I don't... But yeah, I mean, it was in such small amounts. It was more just playing with it. I was just playing with myself, really. <laughs> so... Um, but yeah, not, not enough and not long enough to build... The majority. What dose of trend would you use if you would use it for contest prep? You know, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know as if I really would anymore. Um, it really, I just feel like that it'd be something that's a lot more situational, whether or not you need it or not. And even then, I would try to just use as little as I could, you know, but it's possible to contest prep without it. You know, you don't, it's not necessarily absolutely needed. You just got to be really lean. <laughs> just get really lean, you know. Um... I mean, Roman Fritz went all last year with no trend. You know, the entire last year, and he was insane the entire last year. And now I know he is a pro at the top level, but still, like, it's not necessary to be peeled. It's not necessary to be shredded. And I would say Roman is one of the most shredded dudes on stage. One of the most shredded dudes up there. Drew, come on. <laughs> you 
Drew with the $10 super chat. Do you think if I take a vial of test sit per week that I could be as big as K-Mac? K and will it turn my beard black? Um, yes. <laughs> Man, that whole situation. I just don't understand. I just don't. I just don't understand. <laughs> you mean Tyrone? <laughs> oh, God. I just don't understand. Like, I just don't, I don't, I just, none of it made sense. <laughs> I just wanted it to make sense. Oh no, Steve. <laughs> Dude, he must be going to all, I meant to tell you, I forgot to tell you that dude had uh, a platinum pass vip pass he sat i saw him he like i was in the i was in g so a b c d e f g i was seven rows back he was like four rows back like i was i was uh the judging the judges were like one row up and like right over here to me at the arnold that guy is going to be everywhere. <laughs> so when, when me and Steve went to the uh, Olympia, there is this kid who was running around the expo and just trying to talk. <laughs> I mean, that's lots of people are trying to talk. He was trying to like get, trying to give hugs to Jack guys. I think that's basically what it was. He was trying to hug people that had muscles. And, which is not cool. <laughs> it was so awkward. Cause like we, we ran into, um, somebody we knew and, and we were all talking and then we were over by me and Steve were over by, uh, the booth that, uh, Martin Fitzwater was at and we were talking to Martin and then this kid came up and was like trying to talk to me. And then one of the guys that, yeah, Steve blocked him. <laughs> and then one of the guys that we knew came up to talk to me and Steve and somehow the hugging man, because this, the, this guy had just done a competition. So like he was very lean, he was in a tank top, you know, he was jacked. And this kid, I, I, I'm pretty sure he's a kid. He looks young, but like not all there. And he looks to this guy and just like intercepted him from talking to me and Steve. And in like the five minutes that he was talking to that guy, he gave him like, like 10 pinky shit. Like he kept, he would keep reaching out his pinky to, cause he wanted to do like that. He gave the guy like 10 of those and like five hugs. And every single time the dude's like looking over at me, like what the fuck is happening? And I was just laughing. Like, I don't know what's going on here, man. Um, and then finally like pulled the guy out kid like went on but he was just that kid was just like circling the expo it was like every time I fucking saw him he would come up and try to talk to me and there was I mean he he seemed a little bit like he couldn't catch the hint 
that this is not cool, that it's really strange. Um, but it was just too much. Like it was just like he needed he needed like supervision or something to somebody tell him like you can't just be trying to go in for hugs on everybody. And it was just like on one hand it's like you don't want to be mean, but on the other hand it's like you got to draw the line and be like this isn't this isn't cool, kid. And the last time that he came up to me, Steve was just like, "Nope." Nope, go. Nope, you're done. <laughs> get, get out, get out of here. <laughs> and I was just like, thank God, because I, I just, I didn't have the heart to to do it. But we were all thinking it, just like you gotta stop, dude. You can't do this. <laughs> Eight out of ten is autistic as Victor. <laughs> it's just like you can't do this. You can't just be going around the expo just hugging people, like just talking. Just going from asking a question to be like, give me a hug. And then going back to asking a question and you'd be like, uh, no. And then he'd be like, then he'd ask another question and he'd be like, uh, can you give me a hug? <laughs> it's like, what? No, <laughs> stop it, go away. But so then I saw him at the uh, Arnold because me and Steve as just assumed it was like, this guy just must like live in Orlando and just like popped in here and was just like checking everything out. Cause we were just like, what? is going on but then i saw him at the arnold and i saw that he had a platinum pass just like i had and he was sitting in the same area that i like this guy is gonna be at everything he's probably watching right now <laughs> but what i want to say is i forgot i didn't tell you this steve um i was walking around the expo with tanner and we ran into this guy he came up to me he came up to me and I was just like, all right, I'm just going to play it cool, play it chill. Tanner stood there and observed Tanner, Tanner and his girlfriend. Um, what's her name? Liz just stood there and watched. <laughs> this guy had done his research on me. Um, because the questions that he was asking and the things that he was saying. So he was like, he saw me and he was like, hey, Chase. And I was like, oh, shit. I was like, oh, hey, buddy. <laughs> and he was like, he was like, uh, like, it was just like, didn't, didn't just went straight into like asking things, asking questions that to let me know that he knows who I am and that he did research on me. So he was like, he was like, oh, what did he, what did he say first? It was just like, did you buy your house in 2016? Did you, do you ever get back to Oklahoma? You ever get back to that Walmart in Oklahoma? Like I worked at Walmart in Oklahoma in the middle of college Like he was, he was bringing up stuff like that. And I was like, and that's when I was like really weirded out. I was like, uh, and, and Tanner was just standing there like, what is happening? <laughs> and then, and then I, like, there were just, uh, there was a few of those. And then I just cut them off and I was like, Hey buddy, we got to go. I was like, do you know, I was like, do you know where this booth is? I was like, we, we got to get over there right now, which we didn't, but it was like, fuck. And, and just like, you know, just kind of like turned, turned him and pushed him away. Yeah. <laughs> and we just, we just walked and Tanner was like, what the fuck was that? And I was like, dude, this guy was at the Olympia, but he, all those things he was saying was shit in my past like he fucking was looking into me was he was he big though no he's like no he doesn't he like he doesn't work out he's tall he's taller than all of us he was like probably six two um i saw him in a picture 
Steve, what picture was that? Um, shoot. I saw him in a picture posted on Instagram with a bodybuilder. Who was that? It wasn't Ian. It was James. <laughs> Yeah, he was in a picture with James. Oh, man. Yes, I found it. <laughs> oh, God. I found it. Okay, here he is. So there, there he is with James. <laughs> That's him. Yes, he is autistic, but somebody's just got to tell him, like, you can't just be hugging. Guys, you just can't be hugging on people. You just can't go in for a hug out of nowhere. And I guarantee James got probably four or five hugs out of this situation. <laughs> this is a public service announcement. Yeah, man. And there was, there was other times, there were other times where I saw him at the expo and I literally had, I was standing with Paul and Todd and Kurt and I pointed him out to Kurt, but I saw him I saw him on the other side of the guys because we were like by the state by the stage at the expo. They were like watching like classic or, or bikini or something. I don't know. We were just like wasting time. And I was standing there and I saw him in the distance and I just like put myself but like put Paul in between me and him and just like kept circling around trying to stay away from him. I mean, like, he really, he should have, he, sh like, because, like, yeah, on one hand, it's like, I feel bad that somebody's not stopping him, but it's like, you got, you can't just let people, like, hug on you and shit, you know? So, like, he, he's, he needs, like, he needs some supervision to be like, hey, this is not cool. Like, what's going on? No, you can't do that. But it was nuts, because he would, like, ask a question straight face, no emotion, and then just be like, can I get a hug? And it's like, what? No, no, you can't get a hug. I don't know you. <laughs> and then every time we saw him, like in the distance, it was always with somebody that was, and always try, just getting hugs from everybody. It was like, oh, fuck. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what it was. That's what it was. I don't even hug my mom. <laughs> you jerk. Yeah, but I guarantee he's going to be at the Olympia. Guarantee it. Like, because, I mean, those, those platinum VIP tickets, like, those weren't cheap. I think it was like, it, those were like 800 bucks or something. Like, if he's, like, because he also had silver, where, like, me and Steve had silver VIP passes at the Olympia. Like, those weren't cheap. He was right there, too. There used to be a thread on Get Big where some guy would grow by BB Pros at the expo. And they'd all be smiling while getting their peg squeezed. Like, that sucks, because it's like, especially if they don't know. Like, someone like poor James, who's super freaking nice, that's what that's what sucks is like it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen the first time because you don't want to be mean, but you don't realize what's going on, and then the second time they want to like hug you again. It's like, okay, what's wait, what's happening here? But yeah, he would always approach like this. He'd always approach. What's up, Chase? And I was just like, 
Hi. <laughs> like, damn it. Come on. Well, I mean, seriously, though, public service announcement. Don't let this don't don't because it's it's too much because I got to the point like it's to the point where, where it's like, is he doing this for like some kind of pleasure at this point? And then then it, if that's the way it is and this then it's really fucking not good. You know, so yeah, I, I think people should know to to not let this kid, you know, fuck, fucking grope you. <laughs> I mean, he's just giving out hugs and shit, but it's like that's too much. <laughs> Marking his territory. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Like any, like any random guy might be able to get away with that with like the bikini girls. Just walk up and be like, hi, I'm a huge fan of yours. Can I get a hug? <laughs> and you might get away with one hug. <laughs> but word should get out that that guy wants to hug you. And I don't know if it's doing something for him or what's happening here. Oh, man. <laughs> right just go straight for a kiss and a hand on his crotch scare the fuck out of him <laughs> go right right in there for it uh what do we got here after a show how many pounds a week do you aim to gain and after eight weeks, how many would you shoot for weekly? Let's say 190 pounds, stage weight guy. Man, I, I would... I wouldn't hold back, honestly, you know? And I feel like we see that pretty often, where it's like one weekend you see these guys on a big stage, and then two weekends later and they look full-blown off-season. Like... If you're, I feel like if you're a bodybuilder, you should just get back, eat your food, fill the fuck out so that you can get back to off season and get back to growing, get back to, you know, a, 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 a healthier body fat percentage, you know, like I could understand if you're like, a big like social media guy and you're trying to stay super lean and like maybe come out of that as slow as possible and, and maintain it as long as possible. But I don't think that that would be the most optimal thing for gains. So it's like any time that I've ended a, a diet, ended a cut, went through a contest prep, like it'd be... 40 pounds up in six weeks kind of thing, you know, 20 pounds up in two weeks. Like, it's just, I would just eat, get satisfied, get, get that out of your system, get the food focus out of your system and move on. But, you know, we were talking about this yesterday, uh, on, on Paul's live stream. Um, and I think it would be a really good idea. And that would, that would be, you know, to potentially use 
something like semiglutide post contest so that you feel full and it kills that appetite because there's something about that like post contest window post long cut window where you're just insatiable you know especially if it's new to you i feel like the guys that have done it for years you know they've they've figured it out and they've kind of adapted to that lower body fat percentage not so food focused but for people that are like new to it i don't think it would be a bad idea to potentially you know test out a glp1 earlier on just to kind of get your dose figured out but then when it's game time throw that in there so you're not just like binging for weeks you know um but I would, I would still say that might be something that would be more towards, you know, if you're, if you're like a, a really trying to stay lean for like, you know, like how, I mean, how Steve stays lean all the time, you know, he stays lean for his content because, you know, it's, it's good for content. It is, it's very good for content. Just like Juji Mufu, he stays super fucking lean because it's great for his content, you know? It's great for his image. Um, I don't, but I'm a real fat kid. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just too fat. I just love food so much. <laughs> I just, I can't stop eating. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, I, I think... I don't think that there's... I think that it's pretty hard to do it wrong. I don't think it would be wrong to gain 40 pounds in five or six weeks. I don't think it would be wrong to hold yourself to five pounds a week. Two pounds. Like, I don't, I, the only thing that would be wrong is like, if you physically are getting sick, you know, um, yeah. It says, I, w I just want to maximize growth. Yeah. I, I mean, in that sort of sense, if that's the number one thing, psh, I would just eat after the show, enjoy it, fill, fill, fill the fuck back out. Let your fat come back up a little bit. You know, you certainly don't want to overdo it and get completely back to 15% body fat, but it'd be really hard to do that, you know. Um, but yeah, eat your food, enjoy it, get, get rid of that food focus, get back on a solid meal plan and a surplus and just get to training, you know, and make use of it. And quit worrying about the, you know, worrying so much about how much weight you're actually gaining per week and just go train. I mean, we've seen, I feel like I've heard that from a lot of really good bodybuilders is that they would just try to get back to their weight, put, get weight back on them as quickly as they can so they can get back to regular off season stuff, you know, but and whether they did it fast or did it slow, they always made what they would think would be about the same amount of progress as they, as they would have, whether they held back or had fun. I'm eight weeks post, still glute lines, 20 pounds up, but you're right, maybe I should just stop being stressed with it. I mean, you're eight weeks post, like you've already done. <laughs> you've already gotten through the shit. So I would say at this point, it's like, You've come this far. It's just, I feel like it's so hard for so many people to do that. You know, I feel like, especially when you're new to it, I feel like it's very rare for people to be able to keep it under control. So I would say you did a, a good job, but, um,
Oh, 11 pounds. 11 pounds in eight weeks? Bro. Eight weeks. See, now I would think that you're holding yourself back. Like, that's not very much at all. That's, <clears throat> that's rough. <laughs> that's awful. I would not. Yeah, that's real slow. I mean, I would just, I would just start adding carbs, dude. I would keep fat under control, start ramping up the carbs, you know. If you're not on growth hormone, get on all the growth hormone. Let that help you. I mean, that's 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 like the only reason that I really want to go back down into like contest shape is so that I can take all the growth hormone after and blow the fuck up after. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I would say con congrats on 11 pounds up in eight weeks. Like, that's hard. And crazy. <laughs> uh, how much HGH would you take in one shot max? Bro, do you even know what I do? <laughs> I heard six IUs I am is the cap. No, it's definitely not the cap. It's definitely not the cap. Um, I mean, it's definitely not the cap. I would say, uh, here, let me, let me give you guys a, uh, a rundown <laughs> on last year's cycle. Last year's cycle from growth hormone ruined my face. <laughs> yeah, exactly, bro. No, uh, let me just show you, like, because, like, I've used four I use at a time, a day, six I use, eight I use, and from what I have found, the more you do, the more of a result you get. Oh, you guys can't see that for shit, can you? There we go. That's better. So this is in my Discord. Um, um, if you want access to my Discord, you need to become a member of my YouTube channel. You'll find the join button just below this video. There's a little blue join thing. You click on that. You can choose any of the memberships and that'll at least get you in the door. Um, but just so you guys know, if you want uh, any of this kind of information, source talk, homebrew info, things like that, you need to join the proper channels for those. Um, so the unlimited email membership will get you access to the sources and all that. So the homebrew membership, of course, gets you access to homebrewing stuff but otherwise you get in here and you can see kind of what i do what like you can see my log in here but um so i started uh my cycle last year 18 i use of serastim every other day i was in the 140s um you know i, I was looking like that um but yeah doing 18 i use a day you can slowly start to kind of see um, how things progressed. Um, you know, we're still still coming along here. This is two, 257 pounds. Um, where are we at here? That's 251. Yeah, there's lots of like, going up and down away. Okay, here we're at 260. 
where I thought, mm, maybe, maybe we'll just hang there. Um, this is still about 260, 265. Um, this is 270. 276. This was on vacation where I took a break from everything for about a week. 264 after vacation. Before vacation, after vacation. 272. 270, 272. So you kind of get an idea. That was 18 I use a day. It started off 18 I use every other day, but I moved to daily um, after a week. And it was very, 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 very effective. Now, granted, I did, once I started seeing things change quickly with the growth hormone alone, on a, on a small cycle, I started ramping up the steroid dosages because I wanted to make the most out of what I was doing. But I mean, you can, <laughs> that's loud, <laughs> that's loud. Um, but yeah, I, uh, and here I am today, oh, that was yesterday. <laughs> Getting back in shape, here I was yesterday. Uh, 270 pounds. Um, but yeah, we're getting getting back to where we were because I took a 12 week break in there. Um, but yeah, like the the steroid cycle was upped significantly after the fact that I started to see how much crazy progress was being done with just raising my growth hormone dose an insane amount. And things just started changing. I was like, well, fuck, okay. If this is happening, let's let's fucking throw throw the steroids to it and, and make the most of it. And things just started changing like crazy. Um, but yeah, I would say that there is no upper limit to how much growth hormone you can inject at once. Like I said, I saw very, very, very good progress from 18 IUs all at once, sub Q right before bed. I fooled around uh, a little bit with doing it in the AM and PM. So 36 IUs in a day. Um, I've, I've fooled around a lot with stuff like that. Um, but yeah, from what I've seen, the more that you can inject, the better off the result is going to be. Yeah, it was all in one shot. There was like a period in there where I started messing around with spreading it out a lot more, but I, I can't say that I really noticed an improvement. Like I, I didn't, like you saw those vacation pictures. I was doing full shot sub Q all the way up to that. I didn't start fooling around with splitting it up into like two IU shots or four IU shots or six IU shots until like the last eight weeks or so. And I didn't really see much of a difference that that did. And so now I do, I, I'm doing it all sub Q, 18 I use before bed. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's great. It's easy to do. It's one shot. Yeah, I, I, I think it's, I think it's great. So. He's playing on hard mode for more than a decade. I mean, <laughs> basically, it's how it feels, you know. Uh, do you attribute your growth from straight up new muscle cells? You know, I mean, that's the thing about growth hormone is, you know, the, the idea for me is use enough of it to get that whole like satellite cell 
proliferation, building new fibers, getting that thing going and using the steroids to actually grow those fibers. You know, um, I feel like there was a, a good amount of that that was done. Um, but there was also just lots of fullness, lots of car, like lots of glycogen retention, you know, being able to hold more in the muscle, being more nitrogen uh, retentive, like it's just, and now it's just like, uh, there's just like this permanent fullness, you know, like, I mean, the thumbnail to this video is what I, the picture I took yesterday. Um, I know like looking, <laughs> seeing on the camera here in the live stream where it's like angled down on like you can't really tell what anything looks like from this angle but because i get that a lot and i understand i get it um it's hard it's hard to see that from this live stream setup but it is what it is I can't take 12 I use pre-bed waking up with high blood sugar yeah no I didn't have any blood sugar issues and I attributed that to the fact that I was taking my testosterone so high but yeah if you have blood sugar issues like there might be something else you need to look into as far as fixing that because if you're a bit insulin resistant, it's probably not a good idea to be taking a shitload of growth hormone. But the only thing that I saw from using that much growth for, I mean, cause it was from March until November. So April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, eight months. I took, I took 18 I use a growth hormone minimum. There were some days where I took it higher. Minimum 18 I use a day for eight months. My blood sugar was always good. You know, it, it was, it was, I mean, it was better. It was, I would say it's, it was better than I had ever seen it. It made me so much better. But it, again, like the whole testosterone, using testosterone in high amounts, like testosterone makes you more insulin sensitive. And the more you take, the more that that's going to help. So if you're taking a shitload of growth and shitload of testosterone, like one's going to take care of the other. That's what I saw from it anyway. What IU dosage would you say that that starts at? That kind of... Oh, the, the, like building new muscle fibers. I don't know. I really don't know. Honestly, like I would say it's probably somewhere around 12, 10, 12, 15 IUs, probably something like that. But I don't know. I mean, the reason that I went straight to 18 was because that's what it said that they have AIDS patients do. And I was just following directions. She's like, well, if that's what the AIDS patients are going to do, fine, I'll do it too. Um, and like an 18 IU vial, like it's kind of a odd number. Like, I guess I could do 12 one day, but then I would have six left in the vial. I would do six that day, make a new, you know, the next day and then make a new vial and draw six out of that. And then that vial would have 12 left over. So it was just like, it's so much easier to just pin the whole fucking thing and move on. I think there's, I think if there is growth for only a couple months, of course, it's better to have the vial and go with it for four. But if time is not limited to two or three months, then it's not wasted. Yeah, I mean, the research, the AIDS patients, AIDS patient re research said 12 weeks is kind of like the amount of time that you want. 12 weeks of every other day at 18 I use. Because that's what they say in the thing is like, if you are doing 18 every day and you're experiencing side effects that you can't deal with, do every other day shots. And that should that should limit the side effects and, and you'll still get a very good response from it, musculature wise. 
Um, so. But 12 months is, not 12 months, 12 weeks is where they saw it like peak and then just kind of like hold steady. So I would say 12 weeks should be the minimum that you shoot for at doing a significant amount. Um, but I would say the minimum would be 18 I use every other day for, for 12 weeks. Not nine every day. I would, do, I would do the 18 every other day over nine every day. Just, sorry, I was gonna sneeze. Just, just like they did in their study, in their, in their, <coughs> sorry, research. <coughs> 27 year old male, 175 pounds worth of roughly 12% body fat. I've been going to the gym for five years, planning to do my first cycle, 250 milligrams of test for 12 weeks with HCG protocol. Any thoughts? I mean, I don't see anything wrong with that. I think it's a start. I think that's a safe start. I don't see anything wrong with that. What's the trick to counter the hand neuropathy? Time or more AS? I mean, trick it. I don't know. Um, I've been told, I think, uh, I think Josh Perry, I think Josh, uh, told me once that they would also prescribe, um, ALA with, uh, with growth hormone to help with that. Um, which I do take. I have, I've, it's always been something that I've kind of had in the mix, whether it's in one supplement or another, or just flat out taking it. But once he said that, once he, once he said, told me that I decided to like exclusively buy it and make sure to always just have it in, in its own separate pill so that I just know that it's there. There it is. And reduce sodium intake. <clears throat> yeah, so um, I feel like that's probably why I haven't had really, like every once in a while, it'll show up when I'm sleeping, but um, yeah, that that's, that's the only thing I got for you. Uh, Kurt said that what really helped his... Kurt, Kurt doesn't really have a whole lot of salt anyway, but he increased his potassium a little bit and he found that that helped him the most, which you know makes sense with the way that sodium and potassium works. So yeah. Do you think Victor Black's model is good for someone not looking to compete? I uh, I don't know what Victor Black's model is. No idea what that is. Uh, do you think creating new muscle is a good way to prevent sarcopenia? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Some AIDS patients get up to 300 milligrams of Anadrol per day. My stomach is ruined after 100 for three weeks. Yeah. Have you always injected GH sub-Q only, not IM? I, I've done both. I've done it both ways. You know, like, because uh, during that whole thing last year, that eight months last year, there were some periods where I would do it IM. Like, it was like, I think I said that. I think I said all the way up until those vacation pictures after I got front back from vacation. It was like one of the months after that I started doing IM injections 
just to test it out. And then I started splitting it up into smaller shots spread out throughout the day. And I just, I didn't really notice significant difference in my physique. I did notice when I started doing IM injections that the I started to get the hand neuropathy. I started to get the carpal tunnel symptoms in my hand again, which would make me think that I was getting more absorption of the growth hormone. And it was like I increased my dose a little bit, but did I actually see a positive physical gain from doing it? No, I saw the negatives. I saw the negative of, of the, of that coming back. Um, but no, I can't say like my weight didn't go any higher. Like I, I basically kind of held the same look for that last couple months, you know? So I don't think that it's, I, I I think for as easy as one sub Q shot is, I'm, I'm satisfied with that. So I'm, that's, that's the way that I do it now. Yeah, just just buy just buy ALA pills, just buy straight. Uh, what what I have? What's the brand that I have? It's very common. Um, um Two caps. That's what I do. Two caps right before bed. I also take two in the morning. But a lot of uh, a lot of GDAs, glucose disposal agents. A lot of a lot of GDAs have ALA in it. Um, so that that's what I meant when I said earlier that like sometimes I I was just constantly having a supplement a GDA in my stack that just had it in there. But, um, so I exclusively bought it separate and I don't, re I don't really take a GDA anymore. Does injectable L-carnitine really give you that energy boost? I added in the word injectable. Does L-carnitine in, oh, inject. Oh, you did say inject, sorry. Really give you that energy boost pre-workout? Yes, of course it does. Come on. Uh, muscles hasn't helped me on Tinder. Should I get leaner? What other levers can I pull? You could pull the bag over your head. That might help. Um, yeah, I, I would, uh, let me tell you something. <clears throat> if you have muscle and you have fat, people don't think you have muscle. People think you are fat. When you add muscle under the fat, people just think you are fatter. So. Um, so yeah, I, I'm sure that it didn't help you. If I were you, I would not worry about muscle at all. I would just get as lean as possible. 
you will find that most women will be satisfied with how their man looks if he is just lean. If he just looks healthy and lean, you know, that could be a, a guy that's five foot ten and anywhere between 160 and 180 pounds, somewhere around there. Most women would be absolutely fine with that physique. The more muscular you start to get, the bigger you start to get, the less women that find that attractive. You start weeding out women that don't want that kind of guy. You know? The bigger you get, the less that they want that. And I feel like that's also because I feel like people just know that like a guy that's big and lean, like they know that that guy has to really, you know, he's doing some extra work to figure that out. And that's time that's going to take away from them, you know? Um, but like, there's still going to be like, as you get bigger, as you build more muscle, there's going to be women that like that. But like I said, the bigger you get, the bigger and leaner, the bigger you get, the, the, the lower that number goes, the, the more that women don't want to deal with that kind of guy, you know? Um, yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know if my wife would have, I don't know. I don't know if she would have gone for me if she would have met me like yesterday. Didn't know me at all before that. But then again, my wife is very, very, what's the word? I don't know. She's not superficial at all. So I don't know if it really would affect her view on me in any way. Cause like, she doesn't care if I'm like fat or skinny. <laughs> so, because there are women like that too. Um, but when we started dating, like, like I said, I started dating her like eight and a half years ago, eight and a half years ago, I was the end of my bulks would be 210 pounds. You know, now the end of my bulks are 280, 285, you know, so I'd be a fat 210, <laughs> you know, um, but like, yeah, when she met me and got to know me and, you know, I was running between 180 and 200 pounds most of the time. So she's slowly just kind of seen me grow, grow and, and has and doesn't really see it unless you put the picture side by side and she's like, oh, I guess yeah, I guess you have changed a lot, you know, so. You can't be a fat slob. I mean, again, they're like, there's going to be women that go for that. There's going to be women that don't, you know. There's going to be women that go for it. There's going to be women that don't. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. Yeah, exactly. Mm. 
the Pokey Pro. I'm on three grams of Bayer test right now. My levels are 66,000 nanograms per deciliter. I have the blood work. Should I add 120 milligrams of Winnie just for a week to learn Dune? Dune? Learn. Learn Dune. Dune? 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 learn just for a week to learn 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 Learn, 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 learn. Should I add Winnie for a week to learn do? Yes. Confidence is key. I have some busted looking friends that put most dudes to shame. Not pulling unattractive women. I have some busted looking friends that put most dudes to shame. You mean, ug you mean ugly guys that put most dudes to shame? In the ugly department? Put most dudes to shame in the ugly? Like really, uh, is that what you're saying? I don't know, that, it's worded kind of weird. Not pulling unattractive women either. You got a lot of, I feel, I feel like there's like double negatives in here. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Wait, I have, I have some, so you, ha so you have some really ugly friends pulling attractive women. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> you mean I have ugly friends getting hot girls. Is that what it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a lot of words for. <laughs> I guess I was like, I have some busted looking friends that put most dudes to shame. In the ugly department? So uglier than the ugly dudes not pulling unattractive women. So pulling attractive women. <laughs> that was worded so weird. Yeah, I mean, there are lots I know. And that's also very weird. <laughs> but that's again, yeah, where confidence is everything, you know. Confidence is a big part of it. That's huge as well as, well, I mean, yeah, confidence, personality. I mean, that's, that's women, a lot of women just really don't care what the guy looks like as long as you're just fucking nice to her and, <laughs> and are confident, you know. <laughs> Mostly eye contact at the right place. That's all it takes. You get the right look at the right time and it's over. <laughs> Blue SDI, what's up, dude? So they're not as ugly as the ugliest, but still pulling attractive females. Not pulling unattractive. It's 
Sorry, it's just funny. It's just funny how you how it was worded. Um, just curious, what look do you prefer yourself from when you first started until now? The smaller self shredded up and the, the smaller self shredded up and big and bulky. I think it's time everybody took took a nap. So we are getting weird with our sentences. The smaller self shredded up and big and bulky. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do prefer the smaller self shredded up and big and bulky. I prefer that look. Yes. I do. I do. I really do. You know, when you put it that way, I really do. I really do. The smaller self shredded up and big and bulky. <laughs> Uh, yep, Dave gets it. He's still working on that look. Smaller self shredded up and big and bulky. Uh, when I try to look, they get offended. Um, good kidney support supplement, astragalus. That's it, astragalus. That's all you need, man. Uh, you can also just have a fuck ton of cash and women will look past about it. Yeah, but... Then you got women going for you for the wrong reasons. Like that woman's going to cheat on you. So. Um, what are your thoughts and experiences with carb cycling? Something I'm just starting for the first time. I think that it's an excellent way to diet or bulk. I think that it is excellent. I don't think that there is a better way. And it's as simple as on rest days, your carbs are extremely low. On leg and back days, your carbs are extremely high. And on all other days, they are moderate. That's carb cycling. I think that it's very effective. I think that that's just the way that everybody should do it. The problem is it gets confusing for people and then they, they don't know how to stick to it. So, um, so ultimately the best diet is going to be the one that you can stick to. But if you can set up a carb cycling diet and stick to it, then that's going to be amazing. Yes. Everybody's stroking out right now. You should all try to be small, shredded up big and bulk, but not broke back mountain. Good looking. Yeah. Yep. The hugger man got mad confidence is working for him. <laughs> That's what it was. He was just, he was nailing it, nailing it. Uh, all right. Yeah. What you were saying, shred it up or big and bulk. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, it's, I, I, I just think it's just different parts of life in my twenties. Like I'm, I'm, I'm glad things have gone the way that they've gone <laughs> in my twenties, smaller. Yes, absolutely. Much smaller, leaner in my twenties, in my thirties, bigger. Yeah. I, I mean, cause the thing is, in your 20s, you're probably not going to be with your wife. You're probably not going to be with them. And you're going to want to be more attractive to the majority. And like I said before, the majority are going to prefer a smaller dude. The majority. The majority, the majority, okay? But now that I'm married, I have a kid, and none of that is changing, I prefer big and bulky, number one, 
it makes it a hell of a lot easier on me because no girls are going to hit on me. It makes it a whole lot easier. <laughs> Just takes away all temptation. And number two, you get a hell of a lot more attention being big and bulky than you do being small. Like when you're small and you got your clothes on, like nobody says shit. No, people don't even know you work out. But when you are, you know, big and bulky and, but not fat, people are like, you feel a lot more validated for all the work that you've put in because people are, can see it and they're like, holy fuck, you're big. What the hell? <laughs> and that, that's a good feeling. You know, so yeah, I mean, I would say I, I'm glad the things went the way things went. No, 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 no. Uh, do you guys want more kids or just one and done? I mean, I, I think we'll be trying for another in a couple years. Um, yeah, I, I think we'll at least try for one more. So. You mentioned ALA a few weeks back for CTS growth hormone usage. I also mentioned it today. Yeah. How effective have you seen this to be in practice? I, I think that it is effective. And at what dosage? Six, 600 milligrams before bed is what I do. There's nothing like walking into a room and you are very noticeably different. You know, I mean, it is fun. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it is pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. It, it is. Don't you need to downsize below 200 after 40? Yeah, I mean, if you wanna live forever, but you know, who wants to be 90? <laughs> uh, your opinion on ubiquinol I think that it is excellent I take 400 milligrams every single day it's good for your heart do you think that the general rule of thumb that 200 milligrams per IU of GH is a good recommendation yes I do yes yes I do and I think it was 250 milligrams I think it was 250 Yeah, I think it's 250 per IU. Um, because that's kind of like what I did last year. Uh, I was on 18 IUs and I was on 4,500. I was on 4,500 milligrams of steroids. My cycle was 4,500 milligrams with 18 IUs, which that adds up correctly. Um, there's a reason I did that. Um, but yeah. Oh man, standing here, my oblique is like cramping. It's been three hours. What the hell has happened? Yeah, Steve's lives are are doing great. It's awesome. Yeah, no, that's it's super cool. Yeah, he gets so many people in there. It's that's it's great. It's great for the community because you know, I, I mean the the more the more that Steve grows, the more that all of us grow. You know, so we like we like to see that. We like to see, you know, people wanting to view this kind of content. That's great. So, yeah, he's he's killing it, killing it. Uh, how much do you just spend on food and subs monthly? Oh, bro, I don't know. I don't know. No idea. See, that's like one of the things that you know I was talking about earlier with like money over the last, you know, 14 years and having no money all through 2010 to 2020 and having to worry about what food costs and all that shit, like nickel and diming everything just to get by. It's horrible. It's a horrible way to live. And I hope that if any of you are living in that situation that you get out of it soon 
because it sucks. Because it feels so good to not care about what you spend on food. It costs what it costs. I don't even look. I don't even look at the price tag anymore. I don't I, like, I just don't care. I see it. I, I like, I, that's what I want. I buy it. Like, it's just, it's such a good feeling, you know? So I, I really don't know. If I was going to guess, I mean, I really don't know. Maybe. Ow. God, why is my oblique cramping up? That's so weird. I mean, I guess I've been standing here for three hours, but still. Um, if I was going to guess, maybe. F With what I'm doing right now. Okay, I guess I guess I can kind of put it. I mean, I do. So like I have I, I, I've been doing three of these a day. That runs about $300 a week. So that's 1200 um, a month. Um, and then food that I eat on top of that. I mean, it's probably like $500 a week. So maybe $2,000 a month. Yeah. Yeah. Probably two, 2000 a month, uh, for food. As far as supplements go, I mean, I don't even know like that. I would say that 2000 would be food alone. Probably, um, subs on top. Well, I mean, what, what are we talking about? <laughs> like what kind of like normal supplements or like, God, they would just take so long to add it all up. It would take so long to add it all up. I mean, 2000 a month on growth hormone. Uh, 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 six vials a week of test. I mean, what's that? That's 240. No, not six a week, six a month. That's $240. And I mean, that's pretty negligible. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of money going out. <laughs> uh, but I mean, at the end of the day, like I do, like one thing that I do look at, you know, like I, I have a, uh, a financial advisor. I have all the info on how much money's coming in and how much it's going out on a month. You know, I can see where money is in different stuff like insurance and IRAs and shit. Like, like I, I, as long as I keep seeing money go up, like I don't really care what it is. But yeah, I mean, it's true. Like you don't have to spend that kind of money on food. Absolutely not. Like chicken and rice is super cheap. I haven't bought like I have I have not bought the cheap chicken in a long time, long 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 time. And I can tell you, there's not. I do not miss buying the cheap chicken, cooking it up, taking a bite of it, and it's that nasty, super hard, fibrous crunch into some of those pieces that you randomly get. You guys know what I'm talking about? It's the worst. It like, and it's so random. Like I have tried to figure it out. Which pieces of chicken are the ones that are gonna, yeah, straight rubber. The ones that just like you're looking and like I would just look and feel all the packages and, and just try to find the ones that I thought would not be like that, and I would still sometimes, I'll, an entire fucking package would be straight fucking rubber. And it was awful. But like now, I, I yeah, I don't know what it is. I, I mean, one thing that I really tried to avoid was buying the really big chicken breasts, which is hard when you're buying like the, the grocery store brand. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, even the Purdue stuff is like that. Yeah, like I literally, like if I buy chicken, it's the organic expensive shit. It's like seven or eight bucks a pound. But it's always good. It's always good. I don't get a bad piece out of it. You know, it's not it's not the Purdue brand that I get now. Um, I get like just the, the that brand that's like, um, it's just called, it's the organics brand is what it's called. Like, like, I don't buy it because it's organic. I buy it because the fucking meat is good, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, it's fucking proper chicken. <laughs> um, there's another, there's another brand in there that I also buy that's not, I don't know. But like one thing is I, I always try to buy the packages with the smallest pieces of chicken breast in them. Uh, Cause they're just less likely to have that rubbery fibrous texture. Um, but yeah, I haven't had that in a while and that's a good feeling. <laughs> um, yeah, otherwise I'd just go for fucking ground chicken or ground turkey or something like that because it sucks, but it all sucks. So, but yeah, like the meat that I buy now, like all of it's like seven to 10 bucks a pound. It's like I, I get the grass fed ground beef or, or like bison, stuff like that. Um, so yeah. Remember being so broke, I'd only eat PB and, PBs and J's just cause <laughs> diarrhea. <laughs> Turns out all the peanut butter had salmonella. <laughs> uh, did you mention your current cycle yet? Six vials of test a month? Yeah, I, I mean, I do three 3,000 tests. Uh, right now, it's just 3,000 tests, 600 primo. Um, because it's it's a simple, a simple measurement on uh, the, the three milliliter syringe. So um, yeah, so I just, I, I pull two milliliters of test and one milliliter of Primo and I do two of those every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So six milliliters on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And that is 3000 test, uh, 600 Primo. And it's not, it's not for any specific reason other than it's just easy. It's just, it's just easy to fill a syringe with, you know? Um, for a little bit there, I was over filling with the Primo and, and doing a thousand Primo and, and 3000 uh, test, but I just, I, I don't know. I wanted to back off a little bit on the Primo and just hold here for a second and, I, and go get blood work done and just kind of see, see where I'm at. Um, cause I haven't done that yet and I need to, so. Pharma chicken. Do you buy the loins? No. The Kirkland air chilled chicken is consistent and very cheap. Kirkland. That's Costco, right? We never go to Costco. It's probably why I keep getting bad, or in the past I was getting such bad chicken. <laughs> Does GH increase appetite? I can't really say that it did. Like I always had, I've always had a crazy appetite. My SSRI makes me feel like I have zero appetite all day. I can't reduce the SSRI dose since it's for depression. What a low dose GH increase appetite. You know, like something like this, something like this would be a reason that I would potentially try MK677. Like I don't say that very often, but that's the only reason for appetite. That's the only reason that I would even consider it. Because 
it's pretty consistent across the board that MK677 increases appetite. So, um, yeah, I, I can't say that I've noticed GH increasing my appetite at all, but I feel like I'm kind of an outlier in that I always have a crazy appetite. I have no problem eating. Um, so yeah, I would say MK677 would be, what's up? Daniel Patrick with the $5 super chat. Thank you, buddy. Are you going to address the allegations against you today in today's red bar report? Sick stuff in those chat logs. Hope it isn't real. <laughs> I don't know about that. No idea what you're talking about. Uh, I'm taking EQ and MK677 right now, and I have a horrible appetite. Grapatite sucks. Run a liver panel. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, it's been a legit evening. It was nice, relaxed, fun coming with you guys. See you another time. Yep. Yeah, I've been on entirely too long. <laughs> it's been three and a half hours. So um, I'm going to hop off of here. And uh, what is this guy talking about? Chris. My name's not Chris. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm going to get off of here and uh, I got to get a leg day in. So I will see you all uh, next Sunday at noon. So peace.